Hello everyone. Today we are getting an exclusive look inside John Knox House on the Royal Mile. So, just so you can get a rough idea where we are, the ca there's John Knox House there to my left. Okay, that's it right there. The castle is up that way. We are probably about three quarters just under three quarters of the way down the Royal Mile as you head downhill. So yeah, so that's where we're going to, right in there. John Knox is an incredibly famous character in the history of Edinburgh and of Scotland, obviously was a big part of the, almost instrumental in the Reformation of Scotland and the history of Mary Queen of Scots and, and we, we are lucky enough be allowed to go in and have a little wander about and possibly, possibly even get to go see bits that you don't get to go to if you just walk in and go. I love it! And here we are inside John Knox's house. So as soon as you come in, it's a bookshop. It's very much literary based. Literary literature, and that's because you go straight through here. There's also the storytelling centre. So it's John Knox House and the storytelling centre and a little cafe and a nice little work uh, sort of event space you can hire or storytelling space as well. In fact, I was getting shown here. One of the storytellers, you all know, I have said that Edinburgh has built on seven hills. You know that. This is facts that you know already. However, this here, this is a, me pointing with a guide I've been given. This here is a story that talks about a mirror between the seven hills of Edinburgh and a town in India that is also built on seven hills. So one of the storytellers has built, has created this mirror sister story sort of thing in that cool but this is a nice lovely big event space with a cafe and it's always good to have a cafe on the wrong line but we're gonna go we're gonna have a wander around inside john knox house and then then we are getting to do something that no one has to do i'm such a kid obviously you pay at the desk there it's not expensive it is only six pound again to come in and wander around and remember we are on the royal mile this is a historic building on the royal mile it's six quid and then you head in this way it's very grand very grand as soon as you walk in here so there he is the man himself john knox John Knox is able in one hour to put more life in us than 500 trumpets continually blasting in your ear. Sounds fun. Oh, and there she is, the lady herself, Mary Queen of Scots. It's a nice grand entrance with a lot of history. Oh, here we go. The crowds have arrived. Now, as soon as you enter, you will hear talking no one can be outlawed for serving his rightful queen. You hear that? You started minting coins in that castle with her head on them. So the conversation you'll hear as soon as you walk in is between this man, James Mosman, and this man, John Knox. James Mosman was the landlord of here and John Knox was the, you know, resident. But we get to head up here. So an interesting fact that I learned from here, they told me here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. The seventh step, always the seventh step, is taller than all the other steps. The reason the seventh step's taller is because it would trip up burglars. You can kind of see how that's taller than, than that one there. And it's because it would trip up burglars, so they'd run upstairs, and then that would throw them off because it'd be higher. Trip them up, isn't that clever? Isn't that clever? Okay, so we get to start off in here which is, some of them are recreations and some of them are original um, books of varying ones. Now this one, the Geneva Bible, is part of the 101 things to see in Edinburgh, objects in Edinburgh. If you've never, if you don't know what that is, look it up. But apparently this book is actually mentioned 
in one of Shakespeare's play, this exact book, the Geneva Bible. I think, I think they said it was Macbeth. Did I just say the name of the Scottish play? I think I need to turn around three times and spit on the floor. I don't think they're gonna like it if I do that, so I won't. And then over here, a history of John Knox and the Reformation. But these are incredibly beautiful books. Something tells me that that is not original. Fireplace, yes, but that, mm, not, not so sure. Let's go in here. So, if you come in here, as well as seeing the fact that it is a beautiful historic building, it is lovely to wander about in, it's more about the politics and the religion of the country, I suppose, rather than just the history of the building. So there's, lots of different ways to see. This is about all the different trades that would be in Edinburgh. And this centrepiece right here has mobiles, models of varying, varying stories in the Bible. So the rising of Lazarus, there's Noah and the Ark with some dancing animals, because there's nothing in the Bible to say the animals didn't dance. The Fall of Man, Adam and Eve there, with Snake Boy. And the Fall of Lucifer. It's, an, it's actually a beautiful, beautiful building just to wonder about. And you know I like my beautiful buildings. Recreations of coins, not originals, but still gives you an idea. I mean, can you imagine carrying these? I mean, that's to scale with my finger. You imagine carrying these massive big coins about with you to these ones that are really small. And these, about the fireplace here, are recreations of the presses of the coins. So there's Mercury Scots there as well, and there's the lion rampant crest there. And again, look at that fireplace. Look at the tile work in the fireplace. That looks like, like my granny's kitchen. And actually my granny used to have those sort of things in the fireplace, I remember that. And in here we have some torture implements. So that one would go over your head and there you can tell where the fingers would go and then we'd get screwed down onto your fingers. Torture in Edinburgh, torture, the history of torturing in Edinburgh is gruesome in Scotland in general. Like the finger press, they would just put it in and they would keep gradually, gradually, gradually pressing until eventually your finger would just explode. Harsh. And then we get to go upstairs, but look at this, like I said, all this is still original. Look at all this wood panelling here and everything. We just don't do that anymore. The more of these historical buildings I wander around, they really did like their windy staircases. So, in here we have John Knox study. That chair looks original. And again, there's that tiled fireplace. Oh no, oh no, what happened to that tile right there? But again, look at all this, look at all this woodwork that you just, we just don't do anymore. Oh, that was way, <laughs> that was way lower than I was expecting. You must have been a small man. So apparently in this room, if you want to just sit, you can listen to a sermon reenacted um, of John Knox's. So it's actually a sermon of John Knox that will just play. You can hear them singing in the background. And there he is, John Knox on the window. I was talking to um, Ella who works here, who was showing me a little wonder about before we got started. And we were saying that John Knox, if you go look at the story of Mary Scots, John Knox is very much played as a villain of that story. And he was a very, you know, shouty, um, protesting man. 
protesting, Protestant protesting, that's, you know, um, but if it wasn't for that protesting and that separation of church and government and ruling, then the Reformation wouldn't have happened and the world wouldn't have been forwarded on by the forward thinkers of Scotland at the time as well. If you look at the Reformation and you see what came out of it, which led on to where we are today, if he hadn't done the shoutiness that he did, then that, I don't know if it wouldn't have happened, but it definitely would have been slowed down. So you've got to look at both sides. So here, this is very similar to the Glasnes land. Now this is a recreation of the roof. What it would have looked like, you know, in its heyday when it was fully coloured. And there is the real thing. Still with the original paint and the colours have faded, but the roof is still beautifully painted with, oh there is he, there he is, the devil in all his glory. It's an incredibly well kept room, I mean let me just do a full pan round for you all so you can see, you know how much I love this sort of stuff. Again, look, look at all this sort of woodwork and we just don't do that anymore. We just don't. Look at that fireplace. country, the, the separation of government and church, it was a massive, massive thing, so you can come in here and you can really start to soak it all in. You can either do it by a written guided tour that you can take yourself, it's a QR code, you can down it on your phone and you can follow it that way, but you know, there's a lot you can wander about and take, really take your time and see. Well worth a visit. I'm really, really for the centre of Edinburgh, incredibly inexpensive. And then you can sit in the cafe and have a cup of tea. I've just nipped back into the main reception area whilst I wait for um well I wait to be shown all the extra little bits. And look, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stain, because this is a Scots edition, written in old Scots English. Mr. and Mrs. Dursley on number four, private loan. We're proud to say the word guy normal, thank you very much. Also, if you're looking for something different to do, it is worth having a look. Check out the Storytelling Centre. It has various activities for not just kids, for adults as well. So, if you're passing by, take a little look in, see what you can do. I have been allowed to come up onto the roof and I'm going to get to ring this bell. Now, the bell, before I go into it, what is? If I look down the Royal Mile. Beautiful Royal Mile here. You see those gold bricks? Well, you can't see them, but there are. They're gold bricks. Um, they marked out the old gates, which I've only just found out were called the Netherbow. I did not know that, but there was a bell on them. Probably around about there, where my finger is floating, but it wouldn't be floating, because there'd be a building. And I bumped my head. You missed it, fortunately. And this is the bell. And I'm getting to ring the bell. Date. What's the date right now? It is 12.43 on the 30th of May. If you heard that on the Royal Mail right now, it was me. That was very cool. That was very cool getting to ring that bell. A little bit of history of the front of the building before we get to go down and have a look at the garden. So this is one of the last remaining original buildings that would be a shop front. However, these would be more walking inwards. You see kind of how see this here brickwork's different that's obviously a later date and that's obviously a later date um, if you can see inside where these sort of brick doorways were originally that would be a lot open 
it could lock up, but originally it would be open. The owner of the building would, would have a shop, but then all the other people would be able to rent part of these shops as well. So, you know, it was, it was very sought after property, especially since the gates to the city were right there, so people would come in, and this would be one of the first main shops that you would see as you walked in. Now that we've been into John Knox House, we're gonna go have a look at the garden at the back of it. So, see here, trunk's close. We're gonna head down here. There's a little rain on the camera, I apologize, it is chucking it down. This is good as well, because if you guys have seen the videos where I went up and down every single post in the Royal Mile, we couldn't get down this one. This one was shut. Now we can get down it. We can finish that off, you know. So, if you go down here and you turn right, you get into the garden right behind John Knox's house. So here it is. Right in here. Right beside the Scottish Book Trust, which is just there. And look at this. Look at this brilliant little garden. Again, it is May 30th. Okay, I will grant you it's not the nicest of days, but there's no one here. This is a beautiful, another beautiful little secret, quiet space, quiet garden, just off the Royal Mile, that you were able to come down and sit and chill at. Look at this, isn't this brilliant? You could grab a sandwich, a book, you could go in there, buy a book, and then come down here and sit and chill and read it in a nice day. How nice is this? Look at this beautiful space. Nice, beautiful big garden with only me here. I mean, grant, granted, I'm getting stared at by whoever that is. Apart from that, it's an incredible little nice space you can come. That's John Knox House right there, right behind me, and the storytelling in the center. And this is just a space, this is lovely. Look at this, this is the kind of things you just want to see, the little areas that no one knows about. You get lovely pictures here. And look, look here. There is a statue of a chicken wearing sunglasses. Because, if you didn't know, Scotland is actually the capital of chicken wearing sunglasses statues. Um, more of them than anywhere else in the world. So, yeah, it's another thing for us to be proud of. This has been a great visit to John Knox House, the storytelling set today. Thank you so, so, so much to Ella and the team at John Knox House for allowing me to go in and have a wander and film and ring the bell. I got to ring the bell. I love ringing the bell. <laughs> um, but yeah, definitely definitely worth a visit if you want to see more and learn more about that part of history that big chunk of history that see if you don't know much about John Knox look him up read about him you'll be surprised at how much what he did has influenced the way we live today whether you know it or not um, it is a massive 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 chunk of history that I bet you not many people know about so definitely look him up have a read nip in there the history about his life is interesting and the house itself is incredible and beautiful so it's only six pound definitely worth a visit um and yeah and then you can come back here grab a book grab your sandwich and sit in the garden and have a little read lovely but i think that will do us for today guys as always you know what to do do the like thing, um, leave a comment uh, please, and also subscribe. Um, that would be amazing if you subscribe. Remember I said if I hit 5,000 subscribers, I'm gonna do a, a, my first live YouTube, so give us a subscribe. Um, but yeah, till next time, bye humans.